Well, my name is Jesse Bocek. Um, I am a Kamloops resident and have been one for about eight years now. I've uh, been a BC resident for about 21 and a half. Um, for me, I have worked tirelessly, endlessly within Kamloops uh, for a long while, since my teenage years. Uh, just been doing jobs here and there in retail, car sales, landscaping, labor. I run a photography business on the side. And all in all, I've just really come to notice how tight-knit the community is in Kamloops. Um, I used to live out in the Shushwap, so it was a very short drive away. One day we figured out, oh, we're driving to Kamloops almost every day anyway, so it might as well call it home. Um, I've spent a lot of time actually, haven't actually gone to TRU, but I've spent a lot of time around the area. My mom uh, both studied and graduated from uh, TRU, and also I was a volunteer over at 92.5 VX. So really I've, I've gotten a feel for how everything is around the area. Um, really, uh, sometimes I work as a courier as well. I've really gotten to know the communities pretty well. I wanted to run as a city councillor because I found that my, my one true calling was to help people, was to always be a person who was willing to reach out to others and, and ask what do you need and be able to stand up for people who wouldn't otherwise be able to stand up for themselves. Um, I have a bit of a background in politics. My family is fairly politically involved so I kind of had that from the get-go of just knowing like what the process was for the most part. Um, but also I found I was very young. Um, back in like the single digits I found I was still having political conversations with friends at school, kind of engaging. I was pretty much having political conversations wherever I could have them. So I was always interested and I had attempted to run in the BC election uh, beforehand and found, you know, like, okay, I'm really serious about this. I found that, you know, it was, it was something that really was, was really pulling me. So the next logical step was to run as a city councillor, get my feet wet, understand the whole process from here to there, and, and really run seriously. I think that was a big piece. People like to look at the, at the city council um, seat as a step up to, or the next hurdle over, over the path to becoming a member of the legislature, a member of parliament. For me, it's just, I want to see Kamloops succeed. I want to see, uh, you know, growth in Kamloops. And really, I think uh, as well, the younger voice needs to be heard and fresh blood needs to be in politics. Uh, for me, the, my top priority is, is tackling the homelessness issue, is tackling poverty, uh, drug use, uh, crime, all of those things. I think they come full circle into uh, kind of an area of, of understanding where things start and finding preventative measures, but also handling where things are as they, as they end up being right now. There's a lot of people who are still on our streets. New Life Community still has a lot of people who they have to turn away uh, for a bed. So, you know, the, to, to say that the numbers are, are lowering as far as poverty goes is correct, but it doesn't mean the issue's gone away. So I would, I think, you know, it, there's, there's more to just, just that for sure, but to understand that we need, this is an urgent matter and people need to be taken care of, I think is the biggest issue. Um, there's been a lot of pilot projects brought up in other provinces of how to tackle this. Uh, the Housing First Initiative was a big piece of, of what led me to really make this one of the key pillars of my campaign. Um, we're sit they're saving money in other provinces and other towns just by housing people without asking. And to really give them that springboard to jump into a job, to jump past their mental health uh, problems and really just find some solid ground to be on. It's, it's saved the ER money from not having a bottleneck. It's saved you know, emergency services from not having to come out and have to take somebody back to the ER to you know, the, the jail every couple of days. So really, it's, there's, there's a lot of benefit to it, I find. Well, of course, young people are the next generation. Um, after me, there will be my, my kids and my grandkids to inherit the earth after me. So really to set up a, a solid future for them is always key, is always something to have in mind. It's, it's what are my kids and grandkids going to live in? What world are they going to live in? So um, with TRU and the students that are coming up through their first year to their fourth year, you know, um, really with, with the current way things are in Kamloops, uh, a lot of them do still have to leave after, after they're, they're done. 
after they've finished. And really, I know I know the current generation is very hardworking. They're passionate. They're artistic. They they want to have purpose, um, not just to go home after a day's work and forget about everything. They really want to make their whole life matter in, in the regard to their, their employment. So uh, for me, I want to see more retention in regards to TRU students. I want to see our city council and just our city in general start springboarding um, the entrepreneur, uh, the young entrepreneurs within TRU who are looking to start a business. Um, I think, you know, going to TRU and, and that, and that basis that TRU has with with the city right now is is fantastic but it also needs to be built on I find that um, if we really came to TRU ask some students questions like hey where are you wanting to go what are you wanting to do what gets you fired up what makes you want to be successful I think that would be a really key part in in the city retaining a lot of them well if I wanted to tell somebody from out of town what what would be best to do in Kamloops with their time, I would say just walk around. I would say just explore, um, experience each community if you have the time. Uh, to go out to Westside, really take in uh, the views from the mountains, to go to Paul Lake, to climb Gibraltar Rock, to you know go up to Aberdeen and see what there is to explore around there. But our, our arts and culture is starting to blossom as well, and I see that, so I tell people, you know, like, go give the breweries a shot. Go uh, check out what we have to offer for you know music down in the park. Go check out the art gallery. Go check out the library. Like there's so much that Kamloops is built on that really hasn't actually been advertised too much. Um, a lot of people think it's just sports. Well, there's more to us than that. So I, that's what I tend to uh, gravitate towards. Well, I think as far as it goes, people love to complain about Kamloops traffic and Kamloops parking. It's really not on a larger scale that bad, but uh, we still need to accommodate people, especially those who are taking alternative transport. So for me, one of the biggest pieces of my campaign as well is to kind of revamp the public transit structure to build on what's already there. BC Transit has announced that they'll be adding a GPS and an app to kind of track where your bus route is going. I think that would be great to uh, work on, but to also maybe, um, I know it's not at a municipal level, but to push the government to say, okay, these are what people, this is what people need to really enjoy their time riding the bus. And in, in order to grow ridership, you need to find convenience. I think it's a matter of finding out what's convenient for the city. Because people, as long as they can find a bus route to take, they would love to take the bus as long as there's an actual enjoyment factor in it as well. People will take that time and that money uh, and put it towards that. So, um, yeah, for us to kind of vie the government to say, hey, add free Wi-Fi, add, you know, better bus stops, you know, those kind of things I think would be a big piece of it. Um, but to also understand that there are people who have to get around that can't afford to. So to take uh, the system that we currently have and maybe put it towards some subsidized uh, transit, I think would be a big piece of it as well. Um, for me, I ride a motorcycle around town. It's getting really hard to figure out where I park. Um, there's only a couple spots downtown and otherwise I'm taking up an entire space uh, that a car could otherwise use or you know I'm parking somewhere where I shouldn't so really I think if we built on the alternative uh, tr transportation platforms I think that would be a big piece um, also in regards to transportation um, adding more EV stations as time goes on as changes happen we will see more EVs on the street um, especially with the advent of, of some more new recent electric cars. So I think we need to build on that and maybe add some more downtown and regular parking spaces. I think it's it's a societal change that's going to happen. I think uh, as far as the challenges Kansas is going to face, I think it's going to go for a lot of other cities, especially within the interior, within the province. Um, we're moving from a resource-based economy to more of a um, automation-based economy, where people are going to be not having as, as much work to do because the machines can do it. So where are we going to find that ability to have people um, work and be able to have that sense of, you know, I'm doing something I'm, I'm getting something done um, I think I think that's what's going to be a big piece of it but also another challenge I think as more progressive policies get pushed forward as more time goes on um, really from a societal standpoint especially with the advent of, of you know false news on the internet and all the things that were surrounding that um, 
I find that you know people will really have to start opening up a little bit more and really take in as much information as they can before jumping to conclusions. I've been guilty of it as well where I just, you know, it's really easy to just point a finger and say, no, that's not how it is. But really when you take a, a closer look, there's more to it than that. So I think really it's just about being an educated uh, community overall and really understanding what the benefits and cons of everything are truly from the facts instead of having emotions trump them. For me, I think uh, the biggest opportunity I see is to really work on, on the new economies that are growing and working on our sustainable resources. I know that uh, TRU just put in a solar sidewalk and that was a huge step. That was the first thing to end up on the continent for those kind of, that kind of uh, program. So really to, um, to build upon that, to go, okay, where can we start becoming pioneers of these of these kind of technologies I think would be a first step for us uh, to really look past um, just what makes us the most money in the present time uh, to invest in arts and culture I think would be a big opportunity to take uh, some of that tournament capital attention and say actually we have a really flourishing uh, industry here and it can actually pr provide some economic uh, growth here as well to really to really work upon that um, because the foundation's already been laid. I think people have suggested it time and time again. The PAC referendum was a, was a big piece of, uh, you know, how close it was amongst the people who were voting in it. You know, it's, there's, there's still some, some time and some energy to, to take and to really be, uh, to really just kind of revisit some issues that otherwise people have already said no to. I think my proudest achievement is just um, waking up every day and realizing I'm going on with, with my life every day at a time and there's still advancement. I'm still learning more and more. I think there's nothing more I could be proud of than just going, okay, I've, I've made it this far. I understand where I'm at. And, and for anybody else who's kind of, you know, wondering, oh, what am I doing? You know, where am I going? Am I stuck? To just be able to have that freedom, I think, to understand, like, I am going forward with my life. I think that's just something that everyone can be, a proud, can be proud of, but especially for me, it's, it's a big piece of it.